So everyone, Craig Hanson guys, right, we're looking at a much easier way to swing the golf club in this video. And we're looking at the new moves out on tour. Why these guys are hitting the ball so, so well, because they're using a style that's much easier. Evidence-based instruction, getting the hands and the wrists to move more effectively. Got a couple of great drills in this video that are coming up. I'm gonna show you how to exactly get your hands in some awesome positions that has a huge chain reaction on the rest of your swing. It's a speed accumulator. It's gonna help with your lag, your compression, your shuffling. And we've also got a drill to help you move through the golf ball more effectively, especially when we're looking at the averages of movement where these top players are. There are some key moves in the swing. We're gonna be taking a peek at McElroy. We're taking a peek at Cameron Smith, another tour professional in this video. When we look at these positions, these major positions, when we look at what I like to say the averages of movement, there are certain positions and corridors where these top players are. And the closer you get to these positions, people, the better you're gonna hit it. And you can see Cameron Smith exactly inside the two averages. Are you inside the two averages? How close are you? Let's get into this video, guys. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Apparently, you have to hit the bell or you don't get the videos. So let's get stuck into this and get everyone on the path to playing some better golf. So right, let's have a look at how we can create perfect hand and wrist alignments like the best players in the world. And in a second, we've got a simple, super effective drill that I know you're gonna love. Now let's have a look at McElroy on the right. We've got Cameron Smith on the left. What a ball striker, both of them. Cameron Smith just winning the British Open. And you know, mimicking top players and using you know evidence-based instruction, it's a great way to go. The closer you get, the better you hit. Now we can see these two positions. The toe of the club pointed up towards one o'clock. Now this is the start of a wonderful chain reaction. What we're gonna be looking at is getting a really simple feel here. Have a look at these right hand positions. Now this really uh, helps people assemble their swings, you know, much more effectively at the top, creating great structure, wrist alignments. It's gonna help you get compression, shaft lean, and enable you to work on, you know, great things in your swing. Now that right hand position here, it uh, really is an interesting one. I believe that this picture here sort of illustrates it best. And with this right hand here from McElroy here, we'll just have a look at this position here. See that right hand, if he's gonna open that up. And this is what I'm gonna show you in a second. And uh, get this part right, guys. And there's a lot given to you. Now we'll be looking at this 40 degree shoulder plane, uh, the PGA2 average, just so many guys around this area here. And you get this part right, and you'll be a happy camper. All right, let's have a look at, uh, just from this side here. We, we know that, you know, stronger grips, the modern day grips, a lot of these guys, you know, they're getting a bigger curve in this lead wrist, more power, more lag, more compression, more speed. And you know, you can be technical without being mechanical. You see the curve that he has there, but he, he doesn't have it now at this halfway stage in his backswing. You know, and a lot of the time when we're looking at this type of thing, we measure it. You can be technical without being mechanical. You know, they're at the left hand position, the cup or the extension at 26 degrees, but we're seeing this is a tour professional. Not one of the guys I teach, but you see moving back at the halfway stage, it's around one, one degree or around zero. So the lead wrist is very flat. And this is what we're gonna have a look at now. A couple of moves here in the backswing, very clear and simple to get you on a, a much better track to playing better golf. If you want to be uh, involved with my online coaching, I'm, you know, with Zoom calls, with Skype calls, and, and WhatsApp contact, I'm teaching people from all over the world. You can jump on worldclassgolf.com and have a look at that. Guys, let's have a look at this drill before we look at a, a much more effective way of moving through. So we're gonna look here at uh, a really clear and easy way to understand this right hand position when we're moving back. So when we look at that right hand moving back, if I take the club away, you can see that here, this right palm, when I take this club, when I swing back, I get my takeaway moving, the right hand is pointing down and it's pointing away from me. But it's, you know, if I was to open up that hand, it's not pointed directly at the camera. All right, so it's not twisted in this direction. In fact, it's pointed over there. So what we're gonna look at here, if just bear with me for a second, when we say that, you know, when we're looking at a, that's a 90 degree angle, right? There's, there's your 90 and there's your zero. So we got 90, 80, 70, you're moving into a 45 degrees there, right down to zero. Now that's also 90 degrees. 80, 70, 60, you know, and 45 is over there. Now that's where my hand was just pointing, right? So let's have a look at that when we, when we swing back and we get that takeaway, that right hand moving. When we get to this halfway stage where the left arm's around parallel to the ground, if I was to you know, open up that right hand, you're getting that right hand to point around a 45 degree angle. And that's a big, clear, strong picture. 
Okay, so when we're moving then into the backswing, what we can do is get that club head pointed you know, over towards one o'clock. And when we get to that halfway point, you've got that right hand pointed over towards a 45 degree angle. And that's a big picture, all right? That's a great way. You can get a little bit of connection in here. You know, you're working that club head back and you're getting those wrist alignments. When I turn that right hand to that 45 degrees, my left wrist is moved in a very strong position. It's actually slightly into a flexed position, which is a great place to be, you know, when we're gonna come down and turn this wrist into a battering ram and just slam this golf ball down the line. So a great way to look at your takeaway and a great way to look at this halfway stage is understanding this right hand and how it breaks back on itself. How this angle picks up and points at a 45 degree angle. Guys, get stuck into that practice that. It's a great place to be in your golf swing. So guys, every time I look at great golf swings, it's, it's unbelievable how often they're inside these two averages. And you've got to ask yourself, you, you know, about your own golf, where are you? All right, so let's have a look once again. At the, I mean, this is a really is a remarkable swing of Cameron Smith, but we've got the wall drawn up the side of the body, right? And we've got four to six inches of, written on the screen, that's the lateral movement forwards, all right? That's how much the average is on tour. And we've got one to three inches of movement downwards. Okay, and that's what they do. Now I've got a line up over the golf ball and that's illustrating what I like to call the finish line. Let's have a look here at this uh, remarkable centered swing. Now you'll see the loop on his first belt here. This is an interesting one. Um, ball's positioned pretty much in the middle. But you see that uh, first loop on his belt that it's over now the ball line or that finish line. Just remember that because it's an interesting one. Getting your pivot correct at the top. It uh, just just makes it so so easy or so much easier now we see the heads move down a little bit a little bit compression downwards in his pivot now look at the structure of that swing wheel now look at the picture on the left how high his left shoulder is as he's turning through so he's opening up high and he's always turning and opening up with a high left peck and a high left shoulder and watch the lateral shift You'll see the knee hit the finish line before the hands get there. That's the thing that club golfers have a big problem with. And if we can get that right knee there, your hips are gonna open and you're gonna have some lateral shift. You get it like a two in one. Look at the lag angle. And that's, you know, you need angles like this when you've got the strong club air positions. This is what happens for you. And uh, moving through the golf ball, moving laterally, we're seeing half of the leg through the wall. We've shown this a lot. Huge lag angles, massive compression. Guy hits bullets. That right leg at impact from here down is under 60 degrees, really. We're seeing that by Adam Scott. Some amazing ball strike. I saw it with Hogan. And I really like drawing, you know, having a look at these averages. And this Pro V1 Pro system, you can get 30% off this on World Class golf.com really like investing in your golf have a look at the left side here now we can see that when i take away the lines look how high that left shoulder is world-class golf instruction has over 700 detailed videos for every golfer practice programs and evidence-based material is applied to helping you to become your own coach and play your best golf and join us in the chat room and join the community of world-class golf instruction and when that arm's parallel there, have a look at that. We've got just some incredible extension and moving up. And this is the move I want to show you now, turning, but turning high and through the golf ball. And obviously, you know, for the senior players, we can't quite get there, but these guys are in the high 50s, 60s, and even 70s at times. But a high left shoulder, really important part is when you're looking at, you know, some of these numbers on, on belt buckles at impact and, and you know helping a lot of advanced players here stop blocking the ball and flipping the ball guys so as i said before online lessons get on world class golf have a look at that we've just got some great stuff invest in your golf people you know it's really really important to you only got one life and one golf swing and work on the right things it's amazing how good you can get if you stay you know practicing with a plan and a purpose let's have a look at a drill now i want you guys to see if you can do this drill create some sensations of where your lead shoulder needs to be in the back swing and the through swing so guys we need this drill this is a great drill to get your shoulders working on a better plane stopping this left side being up and this right shoulder coming out we've got the lob wedge of the sand eye. one of the shortest clubs that you've got you can pop it across the top of your chest so that the end of the grip the whole grip is on the right side of the right shoulder okay now this is what we do to get those sensations and get those feels that we're after those big clear pictures that we need we take our address position 
and we just pop our head or the cap against the wall. Right, now when we move back, what we're trying to do essentially is not have this club head touch the wall. And this is gonna keep this left shoulder down. It's almost like a bit of a stretch actually, or a bit of fitness training here. Now one, one side complements the other. So we're gonna draw, this leads the right side back, get that symmetrical knee work. Now when we're moving through the ball, it's the same thing here, this grip is not gonna to touch the wall. So we're getting ourselves, when, the, when this grip touches the wall, the right shoulder comes out, the left hip is too low, the right hip is too high, and we're in trouble. So by moving it in both directions, just into impact here, we start to get a feeling of what the body needs to do. And then you can move away, of course, and have a swing and feel these positions and get an understanding of how these shoulders are moving. This is you know, a great drill. Uh, one of the better ones actually, you don't need a wall, obviously you can get out there and just imagine there's one there and that will give you the sensations of the left shoulder moving down, the right shoulder moving under and this brings us into a great place to really pivot and turn correctly. You know, moving through the ball, once we get that tilt turning, get our tilts correct, I should say, we start to turn through the ball with this peck and opening up and your trunk opening up and getting ourselves to rotate. It's much easier to rotate when you get the tilts correct. Really, really important part of the golf swing.